wide-eyed innocent, a child looks in wonder at the incomprehensible mystery of medical knowledge at work. In one way, she epitomizes the basis upon which medical practice works, the trust the patient vests in the doctor. A mother bringing her child to hospital, or a sick old lady receiving a visiting nurse. Both share a faith in something they cannot possibly understand. This week, Echo examines two opposite ends of the medical spectrum, the sophisticated and the simple, to see how such trust is discharged. This is one of the most advanced and best equipped hospitals in the world. Patients from many countries come here for some of the most complicated and delicate treatment in medical science, heart surgery. The hospital is in Houston, Texas, and of course everything in Texas is bigger and better. But in this case, it's no mere boast. This is among the best in the world. And in charge of it is this man, Dr. Michael DeBakey, an acknowledged world leader in the realm of heart surgery. Many lives are placed in DeBakey's hands, sometimes as many as four a day. But clustered around him in this palatial medical center are several million dollars worth of equipment and an incalculable wealth of accumulated medical knowledge. At the head of the team, Dr. DeBakey is rather like a military chief of staff, marshalling his human and technical forces to wage relentless war on disease. The battleground is carefully prepared. The Bakey's heavy weapons are machines, such as this heart-lung equipment, which is lined up along with a vast array of other medical hardware. The staff has studied the terrain well. When everything is ready, the battle for a human life begins. The sounds of battle in this place are quiet ones, a murmur passing from doctor to nurse, the quick efficiency of superb training, dominated by the regular pumping of the vital heart-lung machine, keeping the patient alive while his heart is repaired. This is indeed the top end of the medical spectrum, air-conditioned, chromium-plated, rich. But is this what medicine is really all about, or is it more to do with people than machines? A cynic might say it is easy for Dr. DeBakey to discharge the trust of those who come to him, but this is a kind of depersonalized medicine, except to those who wait and hope and trust. And yet, even amid the production line atmosphere of a medical factory, there remains the fundamental link, the moment when the doctor alone faces the patient alone. Success. This time, DeBakey has won the fight. Another life has been prolonged a faith justified. Success has brought Dr. DeBakey well-deserved fame, fortune, and perhaps most important, facilities. It has enabled him to experiment with machines to assist medicine in the never-ending struggle to eradicate disease. Machines such as these, which one day may do what doctors have long dreamed of doing, replace the human heart. The world comes to DeBakey in Houston because he is the best and because he has the equipment to complement his skill. But that is only half the story of medicine.
Leslie County, Kentucky, is little more than a thousand miles from Houston, and there is a hospital there too. But the difference between it and Dr. DeBakey's prestigious medical center is the difference between a mansion and the mud hut. And there are many other differences. The hospital is run by the Frontier Nursing Service, a stirring name for a shoestring organization. Patients don't rush to this hospital. They come here reluctantly as a last resort. These people live in the remote hills of Kentucky. They're descendants of the original English settlers, and they have remained isolated, integrated, and self-sufficient. It has taken a generation for the Frontier Nursing Service to earn the trust of these reserved people. An outpost of medicine with two doctors and 27 beds, it specializes in nothing except human life. And the most important single item of equipment for the Frontier Nursing Service is this, the Jeep. Unlike Dr. DeBakey, the doctors and nurses here cannot wait for the sick to come to them. Instead, they take medical knowledge out into the hills, to the remote farms, the shacks, the homes of those in need. Off the beaten track, away from the glamour of the big hospital, their service to the community is different but equal. If the nursing service didn't come to these distant places, the people here would likely go without, as they did for generations before. Well, hi there, Mrs. Young. How are you doing today? All right. Good, good. This is medical care at its most simple, the other end of the spectrum from the kind they know at Houston. And yet, in their different ways, Michael DeBakey and this visiting nurse are both pioneers of medicine. DeBakey is exploring new frontiers of medical knowledge. She is bringing simple medical skills to new frontiers. For him, it means heart-lung machines. For her, a thermometer and a few kind words. She's a pretty good cook, isn't she? Yeah. I bet she is. She's awful good. Uh-huh. She's the best I've ever had. Well, good. That makes it nice for you, doesn't it? Yeah. An old lady has received no drastic surgery, just a little care, a little comfort. At Houston, Science is busy devising new machines and new methods of defying nature's capricious ways. The technology and the brain power poured into them is beyond the understanding of most of those who receive the benefits of them. And so it is in Kentucky. Like the patient whose life Dr. DeBakey saved, these old folk know nothing of the reasons why or how. They simply accept it all on trust and are grateful. It is in moments like these that the practice of medicine fulfills its promise. Okay. Now, I probably won't get here at around 9 o'clock, <laughs> but you make sure she doesn't eat anything that morning. Okay. The whole world knows Michael DeBakey for his work to mankind. This nurse remains quite anonymous, but the difference between them is merely one of degree. If the basic premise of medicine is to relieve suffering and bring comfort to the sick, who can say whose contribution is the greater? To be sick is to be afraid, afraid of the unknown consequences, of being incapacitated, and ultimately of facing death. Perhaps the most effective treatment for fear is human contact. The unsung work of the Frontier Nursing Service and the headline-making achievements of Dr. DeBakey are perhaps the two extremes of medicine. But in reality, they merely complement each other. For, stripped down to its basics, medicine means the confrontation of the sick and those who try to help. That and mutual trust. 